what's all the fuss about? All right. I'd like to start out by saying, Barakat Yahweh. What's Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Rechakwadash? Welcome to another live lesson. The name of this one is What's All the Fuss About? <clears throat> and this is pretty much centered around this whole situation and this uh, obsession with the tribe of Dan. You know, now we don't know exactly what happened to the tribe of Dan because the scriptures did not go into detail of exactly what happened to the tribe of Dan. So all we could do is speculate, you know, and pretty much we've been given a lot more, you know, um, knowledge, you know, uh, mysteries, understanding, then they have to worry about trying to find out where the tribe of Dan is. Um, that is not something that was given to us. <clears throat> it's not in the scriptures what happened to them. And there are misconceptions on certain things in the scriptures that people try to use to uh, say that the tribe of Dan, you know, is, is, uh, is you know, one of the uh, tribes today, as far as the 12 tribe sign, like you see here, you have Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Simeon, Zebulun, Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad, Reuben, Naphtali, Asher, Issachar. You don't see Dan here. Why? Because it's not in the book of Revelation. <clears throat> now, when the kingdom gets here, we'll know for sure what happened to the tribe of Dan. You know, the best scenario, which I've heard this before at the main school, and even recently, Apostle Tahar said the same thing is that the tribe of Dan is still around, but they're mingled among the other tribes, you know, because at the end of the day, the vibration is 12, not 13. And when you go back to the law, the Lord said that we will all be a nation of kings and priests. So eventually Levi was going to be brought in as one of the tribes, you know, to receive an inheritance, which they didn't receive back then, because it's written in the book of Revelation, the seventh chapter about Levi. So the name of the lesson being what's all the fuss, uh, what's, uh, how, how was it again? What's all the fuss? So I looked up that word fuss. It says a display of unnecessary or excessive excitement, activity or interest. Yeah, what is all this excessive, unnecessary excitement or activity or interest about the tribe of Dan? Well, we don't know what happened to the tribe of Dan. The scriptures do not go into detail of what happened to the tribe of Dan. And when we go to the book of 1 Corinthians 13, you know, which we have a lot more knowledge, wisdom, and understanding revealed to us than to have to worry about the tribe of Dan. Revelation 7 does not mention the tribe of Dan, and there's a reason for it. You know, 1 Corinthians 13, 9, for we know in part, and we prophesy in part. And the, in the situation with the tribe of Dan, we don't really know what happened. So you can't just make it up as you go. It says, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. So shall be done away. So when Yahweh Shai comes back, then we'll know exactly what happened. Okay, well, you know, the tribe of Dan, you have uh, uh, a 1,000 or 1,200 or 2,000 or 4,000, whatever, that were in, mingled in among the tribe of Judah and the rest of them. And some of them were mingled in among Benjamin. And some of them were mingled in among Simeon and Levi, so on and so forth. But as for now, we know in part. When Yahweh Shai comes back, we'll know the whole picture. It says, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly. But then face to face, now I know in part. But then shall I know even as also I am known. And why didn't the Lord reveal certain things to the Apostle Paul? He was given many great mysteries and revelations. Surely the Lord should have showed him, you know, where, what happened to the tribe of Dan. Because it wasn't necessary. You know, the things, the most necessary things for us to, to know are, let's go here, Hebrews 6 and 9. But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. So these are the main things that we should be worried about, things that accompany salvation, things that are going to deliver us. If you if you don't know who the tribe of Dan is, is that a... a a detriment, would that be detrimental to your salvation? No. 
you know, but you have some guys that have to do go the extra mile because they need these gimmicks to keep their congregation, you know, uh, um, um, excited, I guess. Now, let's go from there to the book of Romans 11. Now, there's a big misconception. Matter of fact, before I go here, let's go, before we go here, let's go to Romans 11, right? Before we go here, let's go first to the book of Ezekiel, the 48th chapter, because they're saying that Ezekiel, from about the 40th chapter to the 48th chapter, this is talking about the kingdom of heaven, and it's not talking about the kingdom of heaven. And we're going to show you why. And like I said, well, I didn't say it, but Lord's will, this lesson will be edifying. This is Ezekiel 48 and 1. Now, these are the names of the tribes from north, from the north end to the coast of the way of Hebron, of Hethlon, as one goeth to Hamath, Hazarinan, the border of Damascus, northward to the coast of Hamath. For these are, the si are his sides, east and west, a portion for Dan, and by the border of Dan, from the east side unto the west, the west side, a portion for Asher. We jump down to the 32nd verse. It says, and at the east, 4,500 uh, 4, and three gates, one gate for, of Joseph, one gate of Benjamin, one gate of Dan. So they're saying that this is talking about the kingdom of heaven. And you see the tribe of Dan there, but no, this is not speaking about the kingdom of heaven. And I'm going to explain why. Now, you know what? Since we went in that direction, let's just go into it. And then we'll, we'll re reverse and go the other way. I had those other precepts first, but let's go the way the Spirit wants us to go. Let's go to the same book of Ezekiel, chapter 40. And let's go to the 39th verse. Short to show you something. Maybe start a little above that. Uh, 38. Let's start at 38. It says, Ezekiel 40 and 38. So they're saying that this is speaking about the kingdom of heaven, the borders, the gates, you know, the tribes and their inheritances and their borders of their land and all that. Well, let's see. It says, Isaiah, Ezekiel 40 and 38. And the chambers and the entries thereof were by posts of the gates where they washed the burnt offering. And in the porch of the gate were two tables on this side and two tables on that side to slay thereon the burnt offering and the sin offering and the trespass offering. So wait a minute. If this is the kingdom of heaven, what need would there be to have a sin offering or a trespass offering? Let's go to the next one. Before we answer that, let's go to the next one. Let's go to the Ezekiel 42. Just keep that in mind because it appears several times within these chapters. Ezekiel 42, 13. Then said he unto me, the north chambers and the south chambers, which are before the separate place, they be holy chambers, where the priests that approach unto the Lord shall eat the most holy things. There shall they lay the most holy things and the meat offering and the sin offering and the trespass offering for the place is holy. So what need would there be for sin offering and trespass offerings in the kingdom of heaven among the children of Israel? Now let's go from there to the 43rd chapter, Ezekiel 43. We're going to read some of these and then we're going to get into it. Let's go to the 19th verse and read down a little bit. It says, And thou shalt give the, to the priest the Levites that be of the seed of Zadok, which approach unto me to minister unto me, save the Lord power, a, a young bullock for a sin offering. So what need is there for sin offerings? And in the kingdom, um, the Levites are not going to be the only priests. Let's go to, first let's go to the book of, I believe that's Exodus 19, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, uh, Exodus 19 and 6. And you shall be unto me, what? A kingdom of priests, not just the Levites. So from the beginning, the Lord already had set it up for the second covenant, which we was which was going to make the whole, all the men of the nation of Israel priests. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and in holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So again, what need will there be in the kingdom of heaven to have sin offerings, trespass offerings, if we're going to be all perfect? Revelation 5 and 10. And has made us unto our power kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. So the whole nation of Israel, the, the men of the nation of Israel are going to be priests. So 
this is not talking about the kingdom of heaven because this is talking about the seed of Zadok, the, the, the lineage of the of the priests of the Levites, because you had certain lineage. You had the children, the sons of Kohath, you had the sons of Aaron, you know, you had Zadok. So you had a certain line of Levite priests that put, dealt with particular instances. Like, for instance, in order to be the high priest, you had to come from the direct line of Aaron. You no, know, Eliezer on down, you know. But in the kingdom of heaven, the whole nation is going to be priests. All right, so now let's read on. And thou shalt take of the blood thereof and put it on the four horns on, of it and the four corners of, this, uh, of the settle and upon the border round about. Thus shalt thou cleanse and purge it. Thou shalt take the bullock also of the sin offering. There ain't going to be no sin offering in the kingdom of heaven. You know, there ain't going to be no, no uh, um, temple. You know, and we're going to get into that. And he shall burn it in the appointed place of the house without the sanctuary. And this, there's a reason why during the time of Jeremiah, when they had the Ark of the Covenant, what happened? They, 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 the priests hid the Ark of the Covenant and they hid it in a particular mountain. They marked the way. And what happened when they went back to look for it? They lost it. They couldn't find it. Why? Because eventually, not too long after that, you know, in the near future, Yahweh Shai was going to come. And Yahweh Shai is that Ark of the Covenant, where the, the uh, mercy seat was placed upon, where the uh, high priest went into the Holy of Holies and the Most High appeared to him above the cherubims in the mercy seat. And that's why when, when uh, they, the uh, Peter and uh, the Apostle John, the Apostle Peter and Apostle John ran to the sepulcher, what happened? You had uh, Yahweh Shai was gone and the place where he was um, laid at, you had two angels, one at the feet, one at the head and one at the feet. Which is a representation of what? That Yahweh Shai is the Ark of the Covenant now. So in the kingdom of heaven, there's not going to be any need for sin offering and for uh, um, trespass offerings. And on the second day, thou shalt offer a kid of the goats. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let's try to get through some of this. Um, right here, 25th verse. Seven days shalt thou prepare every day a goat for a sin offering. And shall also prepare a young bullock and a ram out of the flock without blemish. So there will not be any need for um, sin offerings in the kingdom of heaven. And I'm gonna hit you with two more. You know, I'm just gonna, just gonna, just might as well just go into it. Ezekiel 45 and 17. It says, and it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings. This is dealing with the high priest. And there's not going to be no high priest in the kingdom of heaven because Yahweh Shai is that high priest. And meat offering and drink offering because they're saying also that this is dealing with the Messiah. This prince is dealing with the Messiah because it goes into an exalted one. It's not dealing with the Messiah. And even the one individual here with, with the uh, in the commentary section said it's not dealing with the Messiah because it also speaks about the prince and his offspring you know, him giving them the inheritance, so on and so forth. So this is, this is not speaking about the kingdom of heaven. This is speaking about prior to the kingdom of heaven. This is dealing with, with uh, um, you know, it's my belief, you know, that it's dealing with, you know, the second temple, you know, when the second temple was, was uh, erected, you know, around that time period. You know, that's when it was dealing with, because remember, during the time of Ezekiel and Isaiah and them, during the Babylonian Empire, that the temple was destroyed, but it was rebuilt back during the time of Zerubbabel, Joshua the high priest, so on and so forth. And that's when you had the tribe of Dan around. It says, in the feasts and in the new moons and in the Sabbaths and in the solemnities of the house of Israel, he shall prepare the sin offering. And the meat offering. So the high priest is not going to have to do any these things anymore. That he's not going to have to uh, officiate the uh, Day of Atonement, you know, for the Israelites anymore. Because in the kingdom of heaven, it's gonna, there's going to be perfection in the burnt offering and the peace offering to make reconciliation for the house of Israel. That's not going to have to happen anymore. And let's get one more and then we'll move on. Just to let you know that it appears several times within these chapters. Ezekiel 46 and 19. And he brought me through the entry, which was at the side of the gate, into the holy chambers of the priests, which looked toward the north. And behold, there was a place on the two sides westward. Then said he unto me, this is the place where the priests shall boil the trespass offering and the sin offering. There's going to be no need for trespass sins and uh, trespass and sin offerings in the kingdom. 
where they shall bake the meat offering that they bear them not out into the outer court to sanctify the people because that is already taken care of. Yahweh already took care of that. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 26. It says, for if we sin woefully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. So if, they, if, if at this point they didn't remain any sacrifices for sin, how are there going to be any sin offerings in the kingdom of heaven when Yahweh Shai already covered that? That's why he told the, the wicked Pharisees and them, you're going to die in your sins. Because if you don't believe that he's the Messiah, they were going to die in their sins. So there remains no more sacrifice for sins because once Yahweh Shai was on the, uh, on the cross, the veil rent. Which means that there was no more need for the Holy of Holies in the sanctuary, you know, in a, in a tabernacle. Because eventually, when the kingdom is established, we're going to be righteous. Now let's jump to the eighth verse. And it says, above when he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offering and offering for sin, thou wouldest not. So the Lord didn't want that anymore. Neither had his pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O Most High. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Yahweh once for all. So there's no more offering for sins. You know, I mean, right now, if we go off, you know, we have a grace period where we could pray to the Lord to forgive us. But when the kingdom of heaven is established, that's not going to be around anymore. And this is all based off of the pride of man. Is based off of the ignorance. It's based off of certain individuals trying to be deep, trying to find new material to keep their flock um, entertained. And this is what happens when you try to bring gimmicks into the truth. You have to find the next gimmick. When you have an entertainer out there, you know, let's say you have a musician out there, whether it be R&B, hip hop, whatever. What are, what are they doing? What are they searching for? They're searching. For, first of all, they're searching for a hit. Once they get a hit, what are they searching for? The next hit. And they're always chasing something so that they can keep the audience satisfied, entertained, stay relevant. So that they don't uh, so-called be like a one-hit wonder or, or fall off the, the face of the earth because they can't come back with any more hits. You see? So there's no more offering for sin. And in the kingdom of heaven, there's not going to be any offering for sin. So those people that are teaching that are totally off, you know, that uh, that that's talking about the uh, kingdom of heaven. Ezekiel, the 48th, 40th chapter to the 48th chapter is not talking about the kingdom of heaven. So Romans 11, let's start at 25. It says, for I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, least you should be wise in your own conceits. And this is what's happening with a lot of individuals. They're being wise in their own conceits. That blindness in part has happened to Israel, the ones that knew that they were Israelites, until the fullness of the Gentiles or the Israelite foreigners be come in because you had a set number of Israelites that had to come into the fold. And once these Israelites came into the fold, and so all Israel shall be saved. Why? Because these Gentiles are Israelites. So it says, and, all, and so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, which is Yahweh Shai, and shall what? And shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. So when the kingdom is established and the Lord turns away the ungodliness from Jacob, where are the where what is it? What are the sacrifices for sin for? There is no sacrifice for sin for sin. Therefore, he uh, Ezekiel from the 40th chapter to the uh, 40th chapter to the 40th chapter are not pertaining to the kingdom of heaven. So if that's the avenue that that uh, um, any other individuals are trying to come through, that that that's that's not uh, 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 valid, because that's not talking about the kingdom of heaven. Because there will be no sin offerings or no trespass offerings in the kingdom of heaven. For what? And it spoke it spoke specifically for the sins of the nation of Israel. And that's not going to happen because that's already taken care of. And that's why the ones that, 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 that are not part of the elect will die in their sins in this time. But when the kingdom is established, they're, they're going to come back into righteousness. So we're going to come back to this. But So what, I'm just going to leave it there because we're going to come back to that. So let's go from there to the book of Isaiah 65 
and 15. We're just going to hit points. 65, 15. And you shall leave your... Uh, no, that's not it. Something I must have wrote down wrong. Just bear with me one second. Bear with me one second. Sometimes that happens. Uh, let's go back to the book. Uh, let's see. B. Uh, I don't know. Oh no, it's Isaiah sixty and fifteen. I believe. I think. I believe that's what it was. It was supposed to be Isaiah sixty and fifteen. And I wrote sixty-five. Let's see. Isaiah sixty and fifteen. Can't rock the how about you, Shai? It says, "Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee." I will make thee what? An eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. So there's not going to be any room for sin. There's not going to be any sin because the Israelites, we're all going to be perfect in the kingdom. Now let's jump down to the 21st verse. Thy people, what? Also, thy people, who are thy people? The Israelites, thy people also shall be all righteous. So if they're going to be all righteous, what, what need is there going to be for sacrifices of sin or sin offerings or trespass offerings? There ain't going to be none. They shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. Now, this is speaking about the kingdom of heaven, where there will be no more sacrifices for sin. There will be no more sacrifices for uh, or trespasses. There will be no more sin offerings and no more uh, um, 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 trespass offerings for the nation of Israel. Now, whether it be for the other nations, you know, we'll, that remains to be seen. But that's really that was really given to the nation of Israel. You know? Uh, so now let's go from there to the book of Jeremiah chapter 3. And verses, uh, verse 18. We just go straight to the point. Yep. 18 and 19. Oh, wait a minute. Yep. All right. So Jeremiah 3, 18 and 19. It says, In those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your father. So right now, the part where Judah and Israel coming together is happening. And then there's going to be a point where Yahweh comes back to take us, deliver us from the land of the north, and bring us back to our land. It says, but I said, how should I put thee among the children and give thee a pleasant land, a goodly heritage of the host of nations? And I said, thou shalt call me my father and shall not turn away from me. And this is why Yahweh Shai came. When he was crucified, adopted us back to the father. That's why we cry now, Abba, Father. All right, now let's go from there to the book of Psalms 14. Seven, it says, Oh, that the salvation of Israel will come out of Zion when the Lord bringeth back the captivity of his people, Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be glad. Yeah, because there's not going to be any more sin, there's not going to be any more sickness, there's not going to be any more death, there's not going to be any more tears, no more hunger, famine, none of that among the nation of Israel because thy people shall be all righteous. Now, let's go from there. To Isaiah 59, which was, I believe that was a direct quote from Romans 11 chapter, Isaiah 59 and 20. And the Redeemer, which is Yahweh Shai, shall come to Zion, which he did 2,000 years ago, and unto, the, unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, save the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, save the Lord, my spirit that is upon me. No, this is talking about the deliverance. As for me, this is my covenant with them, save the Lord, my spirit that is upon thee. And my words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed's seed. So if that's the case, where is the avenue for sin or trespass offerings? 
Come on, man. Say of the Lord from henceforth and forever, because once this is established, it's going to be forever. It ain't going to be for a duration, and then we're going to go off again, and then we're going to have to go back into captivity, you know? So let's go from there to Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6. It says, but now have he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. Yeah, because the first covenant we couldn't keep because we were imperfect. And we're still imperfect until Yahweh Shai comes back and changes us. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, with who? With the nation of Israel. He said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Why? Because we were separated, divided into two kingdoms. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them uh, by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. And that covenant was established by what? By blood. You break my law, you got to shed the blood of certain animals to, re to receive uh, a redemption, to receive uh, um, a cleansing, so to speak. Because they continue not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, said the Lord, Yahweh, Bashem, Shai. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. And the only reason, and reason why he didn't mention Judah here, because this is talking about the whole nation together. The nation of Israel together. So this is the covenant. Saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. So it's going to be inside of us, just like right now we're subjected to sin. It's an easy thing to go off. You could just think of wicked thought and you and you just sinned. But in the kingdom, it's going to be easy to do righteousness, and we won't we won't be we won't be subjected to going off anymore. We're not going to go off. We're not going to have an evil thought. We're not going to do anything wicked. We're not going to go off. We're not going to do anything that displeases the Lord. And that's the reason for the sacrifice or the offering of sin or trespass offerings. So that's not going to be anymore. So Ezekiel, the, from the 40th chapter to the 48th chapter, is not talking about the kingdom of heaven with the tribe of Dan. Even though the tribe of Dan will be there, we don't know how, how it's going to work out, but we'll find out when we get there. And I will be to them a power, and they shall be to me a people, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest, so all Israel shall be righteous. So where is the room, room for uh, sin offerings and trespass offerings? It says, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. So where, why, why, if, you, if the Lord is not going to remember our sins and our trespasses anymore, why do we have to offer for them? Come on, people. And that he saith a new covenant he hath made the first old. Now, what was the first covenant that he that he made that he made old? That was the law of sacrifice. For what? For sin offerings, for trespass offerings. It says, Now that now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Because at this time, when the apostle Paul wrote this, you still had Israelites that were sacrificing sin offerings, trespass offerings, so on and so forth, because they didn't understand that Yahweh Shai already done away with that. And at this point, if anybody's still sacrificing animals for sin offerings, they're going off. Because Yahweh Shai is that final offering, which we read in Hebrews 10. And you can read the whole chapter. Now let's go from there to the book of, back to Romans 11 and 27. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. So if the Lord is going to take away our sins, how are we going to have to offer for sin offerings or trespass offerings. And you know, if you ask somebody that, what, what you're going to get? Cemetery silence. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. It says, um, for the gift and calling of the Most High without repentance, for as you in time... Times past have not believed the most high Israelite foreigners, yet have now yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief, the unbelief of the ones that knew they were Israelites. Even so, have these also not believed that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. Why? Because at the end of the day, all Israel shall be saved. For the most high hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all, because the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will what? And will yet choose Israel. 
Oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of the Most High, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who have known the mind of the Lord or who have been his counselor? That's why when the kingdom comes, we're going to know what we need to know. But even then, we're still not going to know everything that the Most High knows. He don't have to show us all that because he is the Most High and we are his children, his servants. Or who have first given to him and it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. So be true. Now, let's go from there to the book of, matter of fact, before we go to this next precept, matter of fact, let me just pull it up. Let me go back here to Romans 11 and 26. It says, and so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, which is Yahweh Shai, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. So he's going to take away those iniquities and those sins away from us. Just like there's a particular law in the, in the Old Testament, in the book of Numbers, chapter 19, dealing with the dead. You know, just look at it as, as you know, someone coming around a dead body, they are unclean for seven days. So look at it as being, you know, uh, waking up from the dead, so to speak, and being unclean and then being cleaned. All right. So let's go from there to... Numbers 19 and 13. It says, Whosoever toucheth the dead body of any man that is dead and purifieth not himself, see, defileth the tabernacle of the Lord, because we are that tabernacle. And that soul shall be cut off from Israel, because the water of separation was not sprinkled upon him. Separate you from what? From your uncleanness. He shall be unclean. His uncleanness is yet upon him. So that the uncleanness never departed. So when Yahweh Shai came, who is the true water, he's the one that separated us from that uncleanness. So if you're trying to still offer uh, sin offerings, that means you did not accept Yahweh Shai. That means you're going to still die in your sins because you're not looking to the Messiah to, uh, uh, to uh, have cleansed you of your iniquities and of your sins. Um. Let's go from there to um, Ephesians, real quick, 5 and 26, that he, he, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. See, by the word. St. John 17 and 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. St. John 15 and 3. Now you are clean through the words which I have spoken unto you. Psalms 119 and 9. It says, Wherewith all shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. So that's the cleansing which Yahweh already took care of. That's why he told the disciples, Now are you clean through the words which I have spoken. So let's go now that from there to Ezekiel 36. And 24, and it says, For I will take you from among the heathen, which, which the Lord is doing right now. He's, he's sifting the nation of Israel and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. And we've been reading about this in other precepts. Then, when he brings us to that land, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. What clean water? The water of separation, which we just read in the book of Leviticus the 19th chapter concerning coming uh, um, among a dead body. So look at it as we being among the graves, but as we were at one time, and the Lord cleansing us from that by his words and bringing us from among the dead. Because it says that a man that wandered from the, from the path of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So now we were clean by giving heed to, the, to these words. Through the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. So what need is it to be for there to be sin or trespass offerings in the kingdom of heaven if all Israel is going to be clean? It says, a new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take the stony heart out of your flesh and will give you a heart of flesh. Why? Because right now we have a stony heart and the Lord is going to give us the fleshly heart, which is able to absorb righteousness because the stony heart will not allow us to do that 
With our spirit, we fight, but our flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And I will put my spirit within you, see, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. So we're going to be righteous. So what need is there, uh, once again, for sin or trespass offerings? It says, and you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your power. I will also save you from all your uncleanness. And we're going to get to that. I see, I, see, I see you put something there. No, it's not. That's not proof that it's talking about the kingdom. And you shall, oh, I'm sorry, verse 29. I will also save you from all your uncleanness, and I will call for the corn, and I will increase it and lay no famine upon you. Now, let's go from there to, um, let's go to Ezekiel 41 now. Ezekiel 41, and check this out. Ezekiel 41 and 1. And what does it say? Afterward, he brought me to the temple. So this is there's an actual temple in this, uh, um, this vision that the Lord gave to Ezekiel, right? Afterward, he brought me to the temple and measured the posts, six cubits uh, uh, broad on the one side and six cubit, uh, cubits broad on the other side, which was the breadth of the tabernacle, okay? So you have the temple and the tabernacle within the vision that the Lord gave to uh, Ezekiel. But then when you read through all of these, it keeps speaking about sin offerings and trespass offerings. That's not going to happen in the kingdom of heaven because all Israel shall be righteous. Now let's go to Revelation 21. Revelation 21. And let's just go to the point. I'm going to go to the third verse. Revelation 21, it says what? And three. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the Most High is with men. See? And he will dwell with them. So Ezekiel 41 here, this is speaking about a physical tabernacle. But here in Revelation, I'm sorry, in, yeah, in Revelation 21, this is speaking about the spiritual tabernacle, which is who? The people. Let's go real quick to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. It says, no, no, uh, Know ye not that you are what? The temple of the Most High, and that the Spirit of the Most High dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of the Most High, him shall the Most High destroy. For the temple of the Most High is holy, which temple are ye. And that's what the scriptures speak about the church, which is that spiritual building. That lively, those lively stones that make up that spiritual house. All right, now let's go back. Let's read that in Revelation 21 again. And, um, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the Most High is with men, with who? The Israelite men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and the Most High himself shall be with them and be their power. As we read in Ezekiel 36, where it says that the Lord will sprinkle clean water upon us. And then he'll be able to be among us because we'll be perfected. Because right now we're these bodies are um, these bodies are filthy, they're unclean, they're corruptible. Now, let's go back to Ezekiel 41. Let's read that again. Afterward, he brought me to the temple and measured the post. This is talking about a physical, actual physical temple and an actual physical tabernacle. Okay, this is not talking about the spiritual tabernacle. And as we read in Revelation 21. That the tabernacle of the Most High is with men. Why? Because we are that temple. Now let's go from there to the book of Luke 17 and 20. It says, And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when, when the kingdom of the Most High should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of the Most High cometh not with observation. Because you're looking for the physical kingdom. But the physical kingdom is not to be seen by observation as it's as it's coming down from heaven. Because when the apostle John saw that vision, he actually saw a city come down. But that city was a representation of the glorified state of the nation of Israel. And I believe that's in the book of 2 Ezra. I'm not sure what chapter, 10th chapter, something like that, where it spoke about that city. It says, neither shall they say low here or low there. For behold, the kingdom of the most high is within you. The spirit that's dwelling within that body, that tabernacle that you have, that temple that you have, that is the kingdom of heaven. 
because the, the kingdom of heaven is the people. The Lord chose the place of Jerusalem for the people. See, Jerusalem or, or Israel is a people before it's an actual place. Now, let's go from there back to Ezekiel 41. Let's read the first verse again, and then we're going to jump around a little bit. Uh, Ezekiel 41 and 1, afterward he brought me to the temple, an actual physical temple, and measured the post six cubit broad on the one side and six cubit broad on the other side, which was the breadth of the tabernacle. Now let's jump down to the fourth verse. It says, so he measured the length thereof 20 cubits and the breadth 20 cubits before the temple. And he saith unto me, this is the most holy place, like you had the holy of holies. And we know that when Yahweh Shai came on the scene, Let's let's get that real quick. Just bear with me, real. Uh, bear with me. Uh, here we go. Beautiful. So now it says, Matthew twenty-seven fifty. Yahweh Shai, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the spirit, and behold, the veil of, of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake and the rocks rent. Now, why did the veil in the temple rent? Because that veil was a separation between anybody else and the Holy of Holies, where the Ark of the Covenant was, where the, where the cherubims were, where the mercy seat was at, where the high priests were entering once a year for the sins of Israel. When Yahushai died on the cross, that was a final offering. So the veil rent because that is no longer needed because Yahushai now is that veil to get to the Father, to get to the actual Holy of Holies in the heavens before the throne of the Most High. Okay, now let's go back to Ezekiel 41 and let's jump down to the 15th verse. It says, and he measured the length of the building over against a separate place, which was behind it, which is an actual building and the galleries thereof on the one side and on the other side and hundred cubits and the inner uh, and the inner temple and the porches of the court. Once again. Now let's jump down to the 20th verse. From the ground uh, unto above the door where cherubims and palm trees made, or cherubims and palm trees made, and on the wall of the temple, the posts of the temple were squared, and the face of the sanctuary, the appearance of the one as the appearance of the other. This is talking about a physical building, physical tabernacle, physical temple, physical dwelling. The altar of wood was three cubits high, and the length thereof two cubits, and the corner thereof, and the length thereof, and the walls thereof were of wood. And he said unto me, This is the table that is before the Lord, and the temple and the sanctuary, and the temple and the sanctuary had two doors, and the doors had two leaves apiece, two turning leaves, two leaves for the one door, and two leaves for the other door. And there were made on them, on the doors of the temple, temple, cherubims and um, palm trees, like as were made upon the walls, and there were thick planks upon the face of the porch without. So this is all talking about a physical, actual tabernacle, a physical building, a physical temple. Going back to Revelation 21, and let's go to the point. Matter of fact, no, let's go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel 42, I got something else here in Ezekiel 42. Let's see what that says. And 8, it says, for the length of the chambers that, are, that were in the other court, was 50 cubits and low before the temple were in 100 cubits. So now let's go to Revelation 21 and 22. And it says, let me start at 20. No, no, 21. It says, and the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. And the street of, of the city was pure gold as it were transparent glass. This is the kingdom of heaven, right? And I saw what? No temple therein. So in the kingdom of heaven, there's not going to be a temple. Why? For the Lord, power, almighty, and the lamb are the temple of it. Because what was the reason for the holy of holies and for the tabernacle and all that? To be able to get close to the most high. That's why he, he gave the vision to Moses. He said, look, when you make this tabernacle, make sure that you make it as you've seen it in the vision. Because it was a representation of the heavens. Of what took place there. So there's no, no more need for that because the Most High Himself and Yahweh Shai are going to be there. So Ezekiel from the 40th chapter to the 40th chapter is not talking about the kingdom of heaven. That is talking about an actual building 
like I said, I believe that that was the vision that the Lord showed Ezekiel of the uh, uh, second temple when it was rebuilt after the destruction of Jerusalem uh, and the temple by the Babylonians. And that's why in Haggai it says that the glory of the of the of this latter house is more glorious than the first. So there will be no temple in the kingdom of heaven. Because when we read up, up, up above again, Revelation 21, 3, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of the Most High is with men. And that's why the Most High and Yahweh Shai will be the temple thereof. And he will uh, dwell with them and they shall be his people and the Most High himself shall be with them and be their power. Why? Because we're going to be all righteous. So there will be no need for sin or trespass offerings. So that negates the whole Ezekiel 40, the 40th chapter to the 48th chapter being in the kingdom of heaven. That's not the kingdom of heaven. There will be no temple, no tabernacle in the kingdom of heaven. There will be no high priest because Yahweh Shai already took over that office. And that's that, you know. So as the name of the lesson is, what's all the fuss? And the word fuss a display of unnecessary or excessive excitement, activity, or interest. So what's all this fuss about, about uh, the tribe of Dan? That's not, that the Ezekiel is not talking about the kingdom of heaven. You know, and there's plenty of other scriptures you could go to, but that those are some of the main ones. You know, you could read the whole from Ezekiel 40 to 48. And the, mo and the scriptures speak about uh, the heaven being the most high throne and earth his footstool. And the land of Israel, that's his pleasant land. And eventually he's going to put us in there uh, uh, forever. Uh, um, Daniel 7, 18, Daniel 7, 27, and, the pre and the, uh, saying to the most high shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. But that's going to happen when the kingdom of heaven is established on earth after Yahweh Shai comes back. So Ezekiel is not talking about the vision of the kingdom of heaven. That was an actual physical temple, you know. And the kingdom of heaven, we just read in Revelation 21 that there's not going to be any temple. Revelation te uh, 7 tells you that there doesn't mention the tribe of Dan. So we don't know what happened to the tribe of Dan. So what's all the fuss? A uh, display of unnecessary or excessive excitement, activity, or interest. Excessive, unnecessary, excessive excitement or uh, activity or interest all right so with that and that's beautiful kdc put this precept up matter of fact man this these are all beautiful but i'm just going to read this one and um and close it out with this because that 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 hit that hit home uh kdc hebrews 12 uh, 727 who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people's for this he did once when he offered up himself and pretty much when you when you um when you uh, uh read the book of hebrews that's you get a better understanding of that whole uh situation with the um um doing away with of the sacrifices by the blood of yahweh shai uh and the brother asked not scoffing just honestly want to know how do we reconcile Isaiah 56 and 7 and Isaiah 56 and 7 that's dealing with the strangers which are talking about Israelites Isaiah 56 and 7 even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them holy uh, in my house of prayer their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar yeah Israelite foreigners for mine house shall be called the house of prayer of all people, yeah, because you're going to have Israelites is going to come from all, all four corners of the earth. And when you read the sixth verse, it says also the sons of strangers. Now, when you look up this word stranger, is the word nakar, which 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 is usually applied to an actual nation. Right? Sometimes it's right here, bun nakar, sons of strangers, bun nakar. But in this case, it's talking about the Israelites. And I'm going to show that to you real quick in the book of Jeremiah chapter 2. First, uh, we'll go straight to the point. Start at 20. It says, For of old time I have broken thy yoke and burst thy bonds. This is the most I speak unto the children of Israel. And thou saidest, I will not transgress when, thou, when upon every high hill and under every green tree thou wanderest playing the harlot. 
because we were, we kept going off. Every time the Lord delivered us, we kept going off. Read the book of Judges. You know, every time Jake went off, what happened? And again, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And he caused so, such and such king of such and such nation to put him in captivity. And they were in captivity under this particular king 18 years, so on and so forth. It says, yet I had planted the noble vine. The Lord gave us all the necessities. He gave Moses the law, statutes, and commandments to give to us, which separated us from the other nations, which means it made us holy. Yet I had planted the noble vine, holy, a right seed. How then are thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? So the nation of Israel turned into a what? A strange vine unto the Lord. And when we look up this word strange, here is the word what? Nakaria which is the same application for an actual nation because we became like the nation. We became uncircumcised. So there's times where when you see the word Nakar or Nakaria or Ban Nakar, it applies to the other nations, but sometimes it applies to the nation of Israel depending on the context. Because again, we read in Ezekiel 44 and 9, right? It says, Thus saith the Lord power, no stranger uncircumcised in heart nor uncircumcised in flesh shall enter into my sanctuary of any stranger that is among the children of Israel. So you're not going to have anybody coming into this. And this is why in Revelation 11, it says in one, and there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, rise and measure the temple of the most high and the altar and them that worship therein, which are the Israelites. But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, the actual heathens. So the, they, they, they don't have anything to do with us. In the kingdom of heaven, they're going to have to uh, 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 keep the, uh, our feast days, have to keep the laws, but they're going to be forced to do that. But they were never given these laws. Because in the kingdom of heaven, the king, the, the, the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, the Most High's government is going to be established, and everyone's going to have to... Uh, partake and do okay i mean i hope that answered the brother's question you know i mean it goes into a whole lot more detail um you know if a brother wants to take that you know take uh that uh isaiah 56 and do a lesson on it you know um and give even more edification on it and that's beautiful so like i said i hope the brother was uh uh that was cleared up for the brother uh chosen vessel all right so with that you know I pray that you brothers have been edified. Uh, shalom to you, Akim, the water for all the comments that y'all put up and all the precepts, you know. Um, and I pray that you brothers have been edified. To the next time I say, shalom.